Hello, welcome to Mary Has No Lamb podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about quality control in love. Enjoy! I always find that I have my faith in love restored again when I occasionally see an old couple holding hands while they take a simple walk in the park. I say to myself, what a long time to stay together and still be able to see and feel the beauty of grasping your loved one's hand. Most of people see these details and pass by, being busy with living life. Others find it cute. Others are sad because they don't have someone in their lives with whom they would dream to have this, and so on. I choose to appreciate and analyze it. What's the secret ingredient in couples who last? And, to be more specific, what's the particular secret of those who last and are genuinely happy with one another and with themselves. You see, I have heard the stories of many couples who stood the test of time, but they were miserable and tired of the relationship. The only thing they could have said proudly is that they lasted so many years, although the quality in those years lacked immensely. It hasn't been good since the beginning, but well, we managed it to keep it up and running for 40 years. What an odd thing to say, emotionally speaking. The joy of being stuck and safe, overruled their capacity to improve the quality. They have given up, and just leave it like this, and make it last for the kids. When I think to the amount of time we have on earth for our actual personal life, hearing up this kind of declarative statements makes me ponder. Can you be unhappy or happy in your unhappiness? I guess so. And different styles of dysfunctional emotional attachment can make that broken love car run for years. I remember Jordan Peterson, saying in one of his many conferences about the reasons why a divorce is such a bad idea, unless it would happen because of serious abuse or violence. He pointed out a very valid argument towards the idea of not divorcing. First, it would be very expensive. (laughs) Second, you would waste so much more of your life trying to find another person and discover it and make it work for you, which would constitute a bigger effort than actually trying to make it work with the existent partner. A more compatible partner does not exist. You work for it with your loved one and they do the same with you. Practically, if you have unresolved issues with yourself, you can't run from them towards another person because the history would repeat itself. 
universe is pretty smart and you can't get away with anything. People who got married three or four times could tell us all about it, or maybe not. Either way, the couples who last 40 years plus and are miserables are the ones in which one or both partners has given up. They either got too comfortable or too stiff in their own beliefs. Are they way better than the ones alone and still searching? Probably not, but they sure like to believe that they are. It is that little gleam of hope and satisfaction that they have in the number of years they manage to have behind them versus the quality in them. When you don't have the joyful feeling of happiness, you can brag about the number and that will give you the boost you need to keep going. Pretty sad, huh? Well, it depends on which side of the love story you look at. If you don't mind eating a three-day-old cracker and ignore the quality control aspect, you are pretty comfy, a bit annoyed, but fine. The same principle applies to the relationships. If you don't mind being slightly miserable for many years, you'll be okay. And that might happen because as a child, you have probably watched the same bad love pattern from your parents and it gave you the idea that this is the way it works. From an emotionally healthy point of view, it doesn't. What I think it would be a great improvement in relationships is the activation of the proactive attitude of the partners. Admit to yourself that getting along with your loved one is a continuous lifetime process. That rekindling love and affection is not a given, but a mission. That communication never stops. That attraction is something you work for. And that it is your lazy attitude what gets you stuck on the wrong side of the fence. When you could make it work so much more if you would only put in the effort you did in the beginning. You see, at the start of any relationship, we all check and double check the quality control. We make sure we are on our best behavior and we do the same with the partner. The issues appear when we believe that it is okay to stop improving and understanding when we take love for granted and ignore what we used to crave for. Our partner is not a tree. It does not have roots. It can go any time. And the same advantage is given to us. The difference between those who happily hold hands and enjoy their company and the ones who brag only with the number feeling stuck, tired and lonesome is in the way they perceive the love in a relationship. Some took it as a given 
Therefore, when you receive stuff, you only appreciate it for a while, and then it's over. And some took it as a mission, and they are the ones constantly working and improving, and making an effort to make themselves and their partner happy. One choice comes with the least amount of effort and a lot of drama and conflict in between. The other choice comes with a ton of continuous effort and work, but it leads to a healthier environment each day. The kind of love environment which makes you wake up in the morning Smile when you see their face next to you. Take their hand and go in the park, enjoying their warm presence even after 40 years. Thank you for listening.